Hello everyone and welcome back. So in the last video what we did is essentially make it so we can speak to the computer, ask it about any day that we have in our Google Calendar and see what events we have on that day. So I'll give a quick demo here by running the program, if I can actually run it. What do I have on November 5th? And you can see it actually prints out my entire schedule here saying I have a lecture, lab, lab, and another lecture. Um, so this is how this works. Now it's going to be really nice to actually get this uh, assistant to speak back to us rather than us having to read through this like we would do if we just had, you know, our Google Calendar. So what we're going to do is modify this function get events so that it does exactly that and it speaks this back to us. Now, uh, the first thing I'm going to start by doing is making an else statement here. So it's actually saying if not events, so there's nothing there, we're going to print uh, no upcoming events. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we are going to um, actually instead of printing this, we're going to speak this because we're going to have the assistant speak that. And otherwise, we will have an F string in here for what the assistant's going to speak. And it is going to speak you have in here the len of events um, events on this day. So essentially, it's going to tell us how like we have, you know, six events on this day, or we have three events on this day, we're gonna start by speaking that out. Now, what we're going to do next is we're actually going to loop through all of these events here. And we're going to print out the events so like what it is, as well as uh, the time that it starts at. So we're going to say you have, you know, CSI 210 lecture on at 7pm or whatever it is, that's what I'm going to be printing out. So to do this, we actually need to do a little bit of kind of weird manipulation with this date time object that we get from this start variable here. And we need to figure out the hour at which we have the event. Um, so to do this is a little convoluted, I'll try to explain this, but we're going to say start underscore time equals string. Um, I guess it's start dot split at t like this one um, dot split at I think it's colon and then zero now or sorry not colon actually this is a hyphen now I'm gonna walk you through exactly what this just did this is actually gonna give us the hour at which our event starts so if you look here at the string it's on the bottom of my screen I wish let's see if I can make it a bit bigger there we go you can see down here we have like 2019 1105 T and that's how this date string comes it comes with a t so what i start by doing is splitting this whole string by t so what that means is we're going to take this half and this half and split them so once i split this by this t i take the first index which is going to give me all of this so 10 um, to 5. now what i do after this now is i split by this hyphen so now i just get this 10. And that's exactly what I want because you know it starts at 10. Now this hyphen five is actually just like the UTC time zone. So yours might be different here depending on what you have. But you can see, you know, mine starts at 10, um, then it starts at one, then I guess five, and then seven. So that's kind of how that works. So that's how we split it. So now that we split that with the start time, what we're gonna do next is add either an AM or a PM to our, um, what is it? I guess like string. Uh, so what we're going to say is if start underscore time, um, we're going to say actually if int start underscore time dot split by colon zero is less than 12, then what we're going to do is we're going to say start. Um, yes, we're going to say start underscore time equals start underscore time plus in this case am. Because this means that the events happening in, in the a.m. So we want to say, you know, you have this at 10 a.m. Now, otherwise, what we'll do is we'll say start underscore time equals start underscore time plus p.m. Uh, now, this is pretty straightforward. What we're going to say is, you know, we're going to find this time. So we're going to find whatever it is. We're going to check if it's less than 12, because if it's less than 12, that means it's in the morning and we add an a.m. Otherwise, it's in the afternoon with the p.m. And then we add that to the end of this string because, you know, start time is a string. Um, and then read it out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say speak. And then here we're going to say event um, summary, which is this part here. So the CSI 2110 lecture, that's going to be the summary. And we're going to say plus at in this case, 
and then our start underscore time. So we're going to say we have whatever the uh, actual event summary. So CSI lecture at and then maybe in this case, 10 a.m. That's what we're going to do. And that should hopefully work. Let me just do a quick look through here to make sure I didn't mess anything up too badly. Um, it looks to be ah, one second, I need to fix this bracket here. So we're going to split at T, then we put the square bracket. So just make sure you didn't mess up those brackets like I did. Um, but that looks to be right now. So let's run this and test it out. What do I have on Monday? You have, you two, have two events on this day. CEG 2136 lecture at 10 a.m. SOC 2109 at 19 p.m. And there we go. That is how that works. Now, what we can also do is if we want it to say like 7 p.m. instead of, you know, like 19 p.m. because that doesn't really make sense. Uh, what we'll say here is we'll just take like this here. Um, and subtract 12 from it. So it'll actually tell us the correct time. So I'm going to just copy this actually. I'm going to put this here and I'm going to say start underscore time equals string of this minus 12. So let's run this now and we'll say the same thing and see if we get 7 p.m. Because what this is doing is just getting rid of that 24 hour time and giving us, because we have the a.m. and p.m.s, right? What do I have on Monday? You have, you have two events on this day. CEG 2136 lecture at 10 a.m. SOC 2109 at 7 p.m. And there we go. That is how that works. Now, this is correct. This is actually what my schedule is. And that is pretty much how we get this to speak it out. Now, the next thing that I'm going to add here, because this video is kind of short, is just making it so we only actually call this, you know, get events function and this get date function if we say something that, you know, makes sense for that. So, like, I'm only going to call get events or get date if we say something to that requires getting that because right now we're always going to do that so whether i say like hello we'll still call get events we'll still call get date so i'm just going to create a list here which is actually just going to stand for all of the things that we could say to trigger us to want to tell the person their calendar or the events they have on that day so i'm going to call this like i guess calendar underscore strings i don't know you can call it whatever you want and then here I'm just going to put a bunch of kind of phrases that someone might say before they're going to ask about what they have or like they're going to ask about their plans. So you guys will understand. I'm going to say, what uh, do I have? Like if that's in the string, someone's probably asking like, what do I have on Tuesday or what do I have on November 3rd? So then we're going to give that information to them. You could say, do I have plans? If someone says that, then they're probably going to be talking about a day and they're probably going to want to know what they have on that day. You might say, am I busy? So if you say, am I busy, then that might, you know, you might add like, am I busy on Wednesday? So we can add all kinds of stuff here. I might just say, um, do I have plans as another one? And, oh, I already have, do I have plans? Okay, we'll just leave it at three for now. But I mean, you guys can add a ton of these um, that you think someone might say when they want to ask about their calendar. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually loop through all of these, see if this is a part of whatever text we got here. And if it is, then we, you know, we'll call get events, we'll get the date from that text, and we'll tell them what they have on that day. So we're going to say for, I guess, um, I don't know, let's just go. Hmm, what should it be? We'll say for phrase in calendar strings, if phrase uh, like this, in text so essentially if we see one of these in the text then what we will do is exactly this so we'll get the events uh, and say that to the person now what we're actually going to do here though is split this up into two variables and we're going to say date equals get date text now we're going to do a quick thing here and we're going to say if date which essentially means if it's not none then we'll pass that um, into here and actually get the plans that we have on that day. Now, this is just to prevent us from possibly, you know, running into an error where we return none from get date because they actually didn't talk about a specific day. And then we call the get events function, you know, with that none and we run into an error. So that's what this is going to do. But if let's say, you know, they say, what do I have? And then they don't continue and they don't say anything. We should probably tell them, you know, like, I don't understand what you're saying or this doesn't make sense. So I'm just going to speak um please try again now the very last thing i'm going to add here before i test this out is i just want to print a 
thing here that says start after we authenticate Google, because sometimes if you just start speaking immediately when you run the bot, it's still authenticating your um, like information for Google Calendar and all of that. So we're just going to wait for it to say start. And then that's actually when we'll start speaking. And let's try this now. What do I have on Friday? Uh, and unfortunately, what do I have? Ah, that's this is what I need to do. I forgot. I need to say if phrase in text dot lower I need to turn the text into dot lower. Okay, so if phrase in text dot lower, because you see this I here, it was it wasn't being caught in that phrase. So let's try this now. Wait for it to start to see that message. Let's run this one more time. What do I have on Friday? You have, you have one event on this day. 6.2105 Ledger at 11.30 a.m. And there we go. So you can see that is how that works. Um, and now we can essentially speak to the computer, ask it about any day, and it will tell us what we have on that day. Now, I think this is really cool. It's actually pretty useful. Um, and we're going to obviously make this more advanced and add some more features. But as always, if you guys have any ideas or you think that I did anything wrong in this video, please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. I do read them all. And with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.